Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I want to go ahead and wrap up this three-part series we've been doing on consisting. Today we're going to talk about advanced consisting, and I'll show you how to program your locomotives so they'll operate together in a consist. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, one more time before we do get started though, I want to ask you, please, do me a favor. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel using this little button right here on the lower right hand side of your screen. It only takes a second to click on that button and you'll be subscribed. And that way, every time I upload a video, you'll get a notification from YouTube that it's available here on the channel. Okay, what I have up here now is a uh, page from one of the uh, Soundtracks manuals. And I, I recommend that you go to the Soundtracks website, Soundtracks.com, and download their Diesel Technical Manual and their Diesel User's Guide. They also have Steam versions of both, uh, but they both cover pretty much the same thing. And both of those give very, very good descriptions of how to do advanced programming and make these necessary calculations uh, in order to be able to uh, have the greatest control over the functions in your decoder as possible. I want to start by, by talking first about CV19, the consist address. As, as it says here, you can go with a value of 1 to 127 for the consist address. Uh, if you put a value of 0 or a value of 128, into CV19, then the decoder will ignore any um, commands sent to the consist address and it will default back to either the two or the four digit address that you've previously programmed into the decoder. So that's something to be aware of. Matter of fact, that's how you turn consist, advanced consisting on and off by simply putting a value of zero into CV19. The decoder will therefore ignore all consist commands and go back to its original two and four digit address. And then all you have to do to reactivate consisting is put the consist address into CV19. Now, with CV19, you can enter a value of 1 to 127. However, what about reverse direction of travel? And this is something that is commonly done with diesel consists, particularly like Two A units, you might have them running back to back as opposed to running uh, cab forward on both of them. So, in order to do that, in order for the decoder to know whether it should be going forward or reverse, um, you add 128 to the value of, of the consist address. So, if you had a consist address of 10 and you had another locomotive that you wanted to run backwards, then that should be given a value or a consist address of 138. 10 plus 128 is 138. And that's true all the way up to uh, an address of 127, which for reversed would be a value of 127 with plus 128, which is 255. So that's fairly straightforward. Uh, any of the programming methods that I show you will automatically make this calculation for you. And in the previous video, I showed you that, you know, you needed to enter the direction of travel uh, for the uh, NCE advanced consist. And that was so that it could automatically uh, add 128 to the CV value if necessary. So that's basically what is involved then with CV19 consist addresses. Okay, so for Advanced consisting, in order to be able to control all of the functions available to you within the consist, you need to set up CVs 21 and 22, and that gets you functions F1 through F8 using CV21, and things like the headlights forward and reversed, and functions 9 through 12 using CV22. Now, on Soundtracks decoders, for the, for the extended functions above uh, F12, you would need to go in and program CVs 245 and 246. 
Um, so basically, with CV21, you can set it up so that you can control the bell, the horn or whistle, and all of these other functions. You also would want to include F8 to be able to mute the consist or mute that locomotive in the consist. Down here, uh, if the locomotive is going to be going forward, you'd want to control the forward uh, headlight. If it's uh, a, a rear locomotive that, that's going to be um, going in the reverse direction, you'd want uh, F0 reversed, the, the rear headlight. Also, with soundtracks decoders, you'd want something like F11 to be able to control the brake. But you'd only want that if all of the decoders in the consist were um, soundtracks decoders that have F11 available. And that's one of the, the, the little tricks you have to be aware of when you're setting up consist. You always need to make sure that you have a common set of functions uh, uh, mapped in your decoder so that if you hit F11, uh, the soundtracks decoders will operate. But if you've got a wow sound decoder in the mix, it doesn't have F11 braking. It uses F7 for the braking. So you'd have a mixture. So you need to adjust that so that, you know, I prefer to use the same decoders in a consist or else just disable those particular functions. And the way you disable them is you just leave them out when you're making these function selections. So what you would do is you would just pick which ones you want, take the, the CV value to be added uh, in here, and then add these particular ones up. So 1, 2, and 8 would be 1 and 2 is 3, plus 128 would give you a value of 131 for CV value 21. Down here, if, um, if you just wanted to control F0 forward, then this uh, CV22 would have a value of 1. So it gets more complicated than that when you start adding all these other things together. So uh, if you're interested in being able to do this by hand, I suggest that you download these um, soundtracks manuals, both the technical uh, references and the user's guides. They go into a considerable amount of detail on how to program the bits and bytes that go into creating these various CV values. But now I want to go ahead and show you how you can do this uh, a couple of other ways that is much easier. Okay, here we are in Decoder Pro. And uh, this is a wow sound decoder that I've pulled up the information on. And we're in the consisting uh, pane for that. So now if you look at this, it allows you to enter the cons advanced consist address. You can specify whether it's normal or reversed. Uh, there's a couple of things here, the consist acceleration and deceleration adjustments, which um, can be used in order to increase or decrease the acceleration and deceleration rates that were originally uh, programmed into the decoder. So you can make adjustments within, uh, within Decoder Pro for that as well. Okay, now let's look at all the different functions. So here's the, the headlights for forward and reverse and functions one through 12. So we've got everything we need here in order to program uh, CVs 20, uh, 19, the address, and 21 and 22. Not a, not a big issue. So let's go ahead. You can set these each up to respond to a consist address or the original locomotive address. So there are some things, I think most of these are all set up for the uh, consist address, but I mean, it's a simple matter to turn some of these off. Uh, locomotive addresses only, whatever. So that, that allows you to go through here and make these various changes uh, as part of your uh, consist uh, setup mode. Now, once that's done, it's a simple matter to go ahead. If you've got this interfaced with your command station and um, you've got a, that locomotive on the programming track, you would just hit the command to write uh, all the changes on the sheet or write the entire sheet. And it will go ahead and create the CV values that are required in order to do all of these different functions and control all of these different functions and it will send them to 19, 21, and 22 without any problem. Now, but what if you do not want to go to the trouble of setting up uh, a computer interface? 
Uh, you don't want to go to the expense of using it. You don't want to use Decoder Pro for programming. Well, you can still use this as a tool. Just put it on your computer, and it's free. You can download it from the JMRI website and install it on your Mac or on your um, Windows computer. And then you can do just what I did. You can create a dummy file, and you can go in here, and you can put all these values in the way you want them to be in your consist. And then all you have to do is click on CVs. Let me go ahead and do that. And what you will get then is a listing of all of the CVs. So here you can see we've got a value of 171 for CV19. Why 171? Well, the consist address was 43, but it was reversed. So 128 plus 43 gives you 171. So it did that math for you and wrote it. Okay, 21, value of 255 for the values we've set up and 22, a value of 1 for the forward headlight. Now, all you have to do is, if you want to, to write these values using a throttle for programming, just write these down in a list somewhere, and then enter them in your, you know, go into the programming mode in your throttle, enter a value of 171 for CV19, and 255 for 21, and 1 for 22, and you're done, okay? You don't have to go through the trouble of doing all those bit and byte calculations in order to calculate what these CVs should be. So that's a pretty straightforward way of using this as a programming tool without setting up the interface and the connection to your command station um, in order to set up advanced consists. So there's one more thing I want to show you. Let me, uh, let me go ahead and shut this down, and I'm going to show you a different uh, tool that uh, will allow you to do this also. Okay, so this is a uh, screenshot from an app that is produced by Digitrex. It's available on their website. Look for Digitrex Toolbox. And Toolbox is two words. If you look for it as Toolbox, one word, you won't find it. Trust me, been there, done that. Um, it is available as an iPad or an iPhone app, or you can use it with Android devices as well. So there's a lot of potential for this to be used. And it has a number of different CVs that you can calculate. It's got a CV calculator in there. And what I brought up here is CVs 21 and 22 calculator. So this is fairly straightforward. You just go in and click on the functions that you want to control. Here I've uh, clicked on F1, F2, F8, and the forward headlight. And as you can see, it's calculated a value of 131 for CV21 and a value of 1 for CV22. So again, just like I showed you with Decoder Pro, you can just write these numbers down or just take your iPad or, or your uh, Android device right next to your uh, uh, command station and enter these values uh, into your throttle uh, in ops mode or service mode programming and write those values to the decoder and you're done. So there's no uh, hand calculating using bits and bytes and things of that nature. So it's, it's much easier, much more st uh, straightforward approach. Well, that pretty much says it all for advanced consisting. Now, one thing I do want to remind you, though, is when you're getting ready to put together an advanced consist, you do need to speed match your locomotives. And I'll have a video update, um, probably the one on Thursday, that will take a look at uh, speed matching locomotives specifically for, for use in uh, advanced consist or consist in general. So keep an eye out for that. I also want to point out that uh, George Bogatuck at Soundtracks did a webinar recently on advanced consisting, and he told me that they should have that processed and uploaded onto their website and YouTube channel sometime after the holidays, which I take to mean look for it around the first of the year 2020. So 
that's all I have for now. Hope you have a good week, and we'll see you later on with uh, an updated video on speed matching. Thanks a lot for watching now.